It, we were sick for weeks. PNNL staff member Karina Lansing and her husband Jason were infected with the coronavirus in early March after a European vacation. She says they were some of the first cases in the Tri Cities area. While both developed symptoms, Jason was hospitalized. It was terrifying, especially because, you know, I can't go with him. And I had to just drop him off at the front of the ER and they came out and got him. And his fever just skyrocketed and his heart rate shot up and then his oxygen dropped. But I didn't know if I would ever see him again. Both are considered fully recovered now. But Karina has lingering issues with her sense of smell and taste. My smell has never return to normal. Iceberg lettuce smells like perfume. Peanut butter has a weird taste now. And then I have this constant like, I'll smells like smoke. I get this kind of ashy smell and I can't get rid of it. Coronavirus cases continue to skyrocket across much of the nation. The danger, says Kristen Omberg, who leads the team in charge of PNNL's COVID testing capability, is that it's impossible to predict just how ill a person may get. We don't know enough about this disease to know if you're going to get a mild case or if you're going to get a case where you end up in the hospital. With colder weather and shorter days upon us, many are struggling with having to spend more time indoors, wanting to socialize with friends and family, and experiencing the fatigue of months of restrictions. We've been in the state for so long and, and everyone's getting restless, but it's so important to just stick with science and knowing what is right and wrong and actually following the guidelines and, and staying safe. While some may discount the potential severity of the illness, there have been significant increases in infections at other national labs, including a few fatalities. PNNL's total infection count remains low, proving that PNNL's posture of limited in-person operations is successful thus far. And it really uh, is what is allowing us to continue in the operational status that we have today. DOE leadership and lab leadership meet uh, on a weekly basis uh, to really understand what the current situation looks like, what cases are being identified, and what kinds of actions should we be considering going forward. Part of PNNL's current success is using a defense in depth approach to limit the risk of virus spread in its facilities. The first layer of the approach is about personal responsibility. You know, if you look at the safe conduct research principles, all of us are responsible you know, for safety in the workplace. That means I'm responsible for behaving a certain way, but it also means if I see one of my coworkers Maybe they've allowed their face covering to slip below their nose, or maybe they've just gotten a little too close to each other to just, you know, coach, say, hey, I just noticed, I know you're really focused on that problem right now, but it looks like you guys might be getting a little too close. Daily health checks are also part of the personal responsibility and the pledge that staff members make to not willfully expose their colleagues. Another example where personal responsibility is paramount is when PNNL staff follow the strict requirements around business travel. David Mons recently traveled to a high priority meeting along with staff from other national laboratories. He says these controls, along with his personal choices are what kept him from being infected while staff who attended from two other sites returned home sick with at least seven people infected downstream as a result but they definitely did group dinners and we felt left out but we didn't participate because it wasn't a risk we were willing to take the consequences of risky choices outside the workplace could lead to scaled back operations and a loss of the ability for at least some staff to continue being productive operations. work team leads ron mabry and gary helberg say they work to coach their staff about making safe choices in their personal lives so it doesn't affect anyone's ability to work. So I share with them the facts that, hey, you can be exposed to COVID-19 in your social life and you can bring it to the laboratory and the consequences are we are going to be out of work. If we do get that infection, it, it could potentially take down on the whole, whole entire team and infect everybody. So I just try to make sure that they're remembering the, the larger picture.
Omberg says her staff who process PNNL's COVID test samples have to be extra diligent not to make risky choices outside of work, lest their ability to be in their laboratory be impacted. We appreciate that so much because we don't want to have to decontaminate the space. We don't want the lab to have to go down for a day of processing and impact everyone. And more importantly, we don't want them to bring it in here and get one of our critical workers sick. As ambassadors of PNNL safety culture, each staff member has the opportunity to be a leader. As an Office of Science National Lab, I think we have a duty to follow the best practice and standards that were set, even if they're inconvenient and awkward, because it's what the science is telling us. It's what policy is telling us, and we want to be good role models for those who might observe us. Think about who are you with during the day? Who are you with at night? Who could you be exposing if you got it? Because at the end of the day, it's not necessarily about any one person who gets the disease. It's about how the disease propagates through the community. It's absolutely has been a hallmark of this laboratory to lead. We need to continue even more now that have in the past with the virus on the move all around us. And if we don't do that, I think there will be repercussions and impacts to the laboratory. To have a little grace with each other, if somebody reminds you uh, to that you maybe aren't following control, don't take it personally. Thank them for reminding you to keep each other safe because that's what it's all about and making sure that I don't give this to one of my coworkers and likewise, they don't, they don't give this disease to me. Be like Allie and I, wear your mask, keep all of us safe, and be able to support our mission essential workers who are on site every day supporting our nation. Thanks for all you're doing. I want to thank everyone that has helped make this laboratory operational and maintaining performance against our mission in this most trying time. Continue to follow our controls to protect yourself, your co-workers, your loved ones, and all those you touch in the community. Thank you for caring for others. Thank you for masking up, for staying six feet apart, for washing your hands, for remaining diligent, whether here or in the community. Thank you. Hey everybody, I sure do miss being on campus and seeing everyone, but we gotta stay strong, we gotta stay together to beat COVID. Keep your family safe, keep yourself safe, keep your friends safe and keep your colleagues safe. We really wanna be able to make it through this. So we have to keep making healthy choices so that we can come back together in the way that we like to be connected. We need to come back healthy and strong so we can get these kids back to school. Stat. We're PNNL. Just as we provide leadership to the world in understanding coronavirus, we must provide leadership to our community in controlling this pandemic. Thanks for your efforts. Let's continue to all do our part and stay socially distant and wear a mask correctly. So please listen to the recommendations of our public health officials as you plan your family gatherings to keep everybody well until we can safely gather again. Thanks very much. You have done an amazing job of coping and adapting while remaining safe and productive. I implore you not to lower your guard. Now is the time for us to redouble our efforts. By working together, we will get through this and we can make a difference. So thank you very much for all that you're doing and please continue to stay safe.